Many of the black and gold faithful in Iowa City take the train to the game. Today, the question is whether their Iowa Hawkeyes can stay on the right track. Iowa arrived at Kinnick Stadium today 2-0, but the first true test awaits. It's the Arizona Wildcats from the Pac-10, also undefeated and sparked by Nick Grigsby, the nation's second leading rusher. They're ready for football on a Saturday afternoon in the heartland. Kinnick Stadium will be sold out for the 37th time in the last 38 games for this Big Ten Pac-10 showdown. The Iowa Hawkeyes and the Arizona Wildcats, somebody's perfect record, will be tarnished today. Hi, everybody. Mike Patrick, Craig James. It's great to have you with us. Both of these teams are 2-0. They've beaten the clubs they're supposed to. Today, we find out what they have. It's kind of a show me game, right? I mean, both coaching staffs, both teams, they're talking about this is a game they want to show up and prove to everybody, and even including themselves, what they have. I think the winner of this ball game jumps into the top 25. Mike Stoop says it's the most athletic team that he's had. That's a good sign for him. Kirk Ferentz says he wishes it were October. That means he's got a little work to do with his boys. It's September. Iowa has to play today. And we'll find out a little more about Ricky Stanzi, who's one of those under the radar quarterbacks. He's probably the one name guy if you ask somebody around the country to name for Iowa's football team that they recognize. You know, he's got a 10 and 3 record as a starter. He has to play extremely well because he's got two freshman runners behind him. They're good players, but he has to lead this football team with big plays. He had four touchdown passes last week, four in the air. I think that's going to have to be a need for them in this ballgame today. We'll also get a look at Nick Grigsby, who is the best running back that Iowa or Arizona has produced in over a decade. And that says a lot. I mean, because they've had some good runners. And, and so here's a guy, Grigsby that at 8.6 a carry, that speaks volumes of his talent. You know, 162 yards on the ground a game, that's, that's crazy. I don't know if he can get there today because Iowa, they know, they recognize, they appreciate, they respect Grigsby. It'll be a challenge for this running attack at Arizona today. They, too, probably have to be uh, di diversified and multiple in their presentation. Sellout crowd of over 70,000 here at Iowa. It's certainly a home field advantage at Kinnick Stadium. Iowa's won 39 of 47 here since 2002. Kickoff minutes away in Iowa City. Welcome to Iowa City. We have Arizona and Iowa for you at Phoenix Stadium. Also coming up on today's broadcast. Former Hawkeye player and coach Mike Stoops is back in Iowa, this time as an opponent. We'll also take you back to Iowa's season opener and a most bizarre ending. And we will introduce you to some of the places that make Iowa City a great place to visit. Couldn't be any nicer here today. It's in the mid-70s. No chance of rain. Light wins, a great day for a college football game. Arizona's won the toss. They have deferred until the second half. So Iowa will receive the black and gold. Will send back Paki O'Meara and Amari Spave. And Alex Zendejas at the Kicking royalty, Zendejas has it teamed up at the 30. Seventy thousand plus at Phil Kinnick Stadium, and we are underway. I am short taken by Spabe. Reaches the 25 yard line. That's Ricky Stanzi, a 6'4 junior, 10 and 3 as a starter through two games this year. 439 yards passing, five touchdowns for the Hawkeyes. They expect pressure on him today. They want him to react with his feet if he gets in trouble and not try to force the throws. Adam Robinson is the running back, number 32, the deep man in the eye. 
Stanzi to throw on first down. Contact right as the ball got there and incomplete. Great closing by Trevin Wade, number 24, who knocked it away from Sandeman. All right, we'll go with our impact players today. The tight end, Tony, Tony Moyaki. He's a guy that had 10 receptions in the first ball game. He has to be performing today. Tyler Sash, three interceptions in their victory last week against Iowa State. And back there as well, the middle linebacker, Pat Anger. What a name. We'll talk about him throughout the ball game, but he'll get a chance to meet the number two rusher in the country this afternoon. Second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Robinson picking his way through across the 30 up to the 33. A gain of eight and a nice run by Robinson, the red shirt freshman who will share the running back duties today as Corey Hall made the tackle. You can check out the starting lineups on the top of your screen. Now you see Mike Stoops wins the toss, defers the strength of his football team defense. They call him a no-name defense. Really no weakness in this defense. So he's trying to put the strength of his team on the field to start. They're only giving up, Craig, 204 yards a game, which is 15th in the country for two games. On third and two. Incomplete. Crowd wants a flag, and they get it right. Trevin Wade for the second time. Broke up a pass, but he may have gotten there early. Dan Capron, our Big Ten referee today. Pass interference. Number 24 on the defense. Spot foul. Automatic first down. Wade, who is a very good corner, a sophomore, already has a couple of interceptions. Hey, you see right away the speed of this Arizona defense and covering up. There's definitely the right hand on the on the receiver's shoulder pad, and it's the right call. Sandeman, he was being held and pushed. He's got to work back. Receivers have got to work hard to get open today. Nice play fake by Stanzi throwing on the run. A shortstop reached out and plucked that one out of the air. And right on cue, I asked for the receivers today to work hard against this speedy Arizona secondary. You talk about McNutt, a guy working, look, gets back into the vision, sees the play has changed, avoids his first route, jumps into the route, gives the quarterback an option. That's working to help your quarterback out there. McNutt, a converted quarterback, has the hands and size at 6'4", 215 to play wide receiver. Excellent start for this Iowa offense. Stanzi again. Pumpkin wants to go deep. McNutt, jump ball and incomplete. Great coverage by Robert Golden, the strong safety, who has corner skills. That's where he started. You know, you, 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 you look and you study and look at this Iowa offense and it's a pro style offense so you're in there and you're sitting around and you're seeing the tight end and you got a power game running game so you have to respect that and put men up in the box the key to this football game for Arizona's defense will be whether or not their secondary can handle plays just like that right there one on one because they're committing eight inside to stop this Iowa Grim game. Stanji is completing only the one throw. He had an interference call on another. Yeah. Good protection. Going to the sideline and incomplete. That went through the hands of Trey Strauss. That was a very catchable ball and a good throw by Stanzi. And, and you know, Trey Strauss, the word that is written down for him is dependable. Well, he drives, works out of his break there, ball through his hands, not dependable there, but at least he turned. The ball was in the air on the way. Ricky Stanzi, he's one of those quarterbacks. If he gets hot, he can find you. Offensive line's done a good job so far, and they're playing without Brian Bulaga who is going to be a high draft choice. He has a medical condition and hasn't been cleared to play. He's still starting left tackle. Stands here again over the middle. Complete. They've got another first down to the 15 yard line. Sandeman made the catch on a crossing pattern. A gain of 20 and a first down for the Hawkeyes. 
Very interesting play selection to start this football game. Five passes and only one run by this Iowa offense. And you're going to see Sandeman doing what happened earlier, and that is McNutt when he worked extra time. You have to work harder, keep going. Arizona secondary has got to stay with the receivers. Great job, as you pointed it out just a moment ago, Mike. This offensive line that's had some shuffling up there, giving Dancy plenty of time to throw the football. That time, the middle linebacker, Tui Halamaka, was trying to cover the wide receiver, and that didn't work out very well. Robinson on the carry, avoids the first tackle, runs through another man down to the six-yard line. Tough run. He's only 5'9", 205, but he's pretty solid, isn't he? <laughs> well, this, as a freshman, will earn you more time to run the football. One of the things that they pride themselves on at Arizona is a good tackling team. Terrible job tackling right there. Two different guys, including Cam Nelson, the captain in the hole, number 20, who missed the tackle. He was tripped in the backfield, somehow managed to get his balance back. Avoided another tackle and got all the way to the six. The five-yard line is a first down. Robinson this time. Uh-uh. Cam Nelson came up from the strong or from the weak safety spot and had a lot of help. Ricky Elmore from his outside defensive end spot was also in on the tackle. So it's third down and a yard. That's the first play that hasn't had an opener. Iowa red zone offense fourth in the Big Ten right now seven touchdowns on the year that's pretty impressive you get down here and you got to really be paying attention to the tight end play action pass and that's a first down inside the three goes Robinson Brooks Reed number 42 was in on the tackle but that Iowa offensive line moved him out of there that time hey, you're talking about an offensive line that has had to have some adjustments and some tweaking. Brian Bulaga, their left tackle starter, he's out. He's not there. So Riley Reef comes in and he has to play. So there, there's a lot of adjusting that's taken place today. Left tackle, he's got a big responsibility, big shoes trying to fill up front. This will be the 10th play of the drive. They have an extra tackle in their playing line. Robinson dives, lost the ball at the goal line, but Iowa has it in the end zone for a touchdown. Robinson may not have been across the goal line, but Brett Morris, the fullback, is right there anyway. That's why it's always good to have a fullback who stays in the game, keeps playing to push the ball. I think that's a fumble before it crosses. It's a good thing that Morris was playing the game. Sure was. Play to the whistle and then some. And now they're going to review this. Play is under further review. The call on the field is a touchdown. Now the only thing they could say. Fumble forward. It was fumbled forward. He did not cross the goal line before he lost it. So it's got to come back to maybe the one inch yeah. line. That's yeah. the only thing. And you know what? This is a freshman running back and a freshman runner. This is one of the things that you learn. You can't lead with a football exposed like that from that far out at the goal line. Looks like ball did come out though before he hit the uh, hit the goal line. Cam Nelson, number 20, is the guy who got a piece of the tackle on the way in. I don't think there's any question that he was not down. After further review. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Well, it's the only way you can go with that. What an impressive opening drive. The only question is going to be is who gets credit for the touchdown? <laughs> How about both? <laughs> Three apiece? <laughs> Daniel Murray will come on for the point after. And if you're Iowa against what the coaching staff called, 
the best 11 we've ever put on the field during their tenure at Arizona. That opening drive says a lot. And Robinson will get credit for the touchdown. And Daniel Murray will get credit for the extra point. A 10 play drive that results in seven points for Iowa. Seven nothing opening quarter from Iowa City. Seven nothing Iowa on a what will we call it a semi controversial call at the goal line did Robinson break the plane before the ball came loose. Well they said the play stands on the field as called so I believe that had to have been that the officials ruled on the field the ball crossed the plane before it came out from their vantage point down there and there was nothing conclusive from the video replays to suggest otherwise that's what happened. have to land to be indisputable to overturn it. And it would be tough to call that indisputable. And that was enough to save the touchdown. For an update, our Times Square studio in New York. Matt Scott, the starting quarterback, gives it off to Grigsby, the second leading rusher in the nation, and Pat Anger will make the tackle on him. Scott, the sophomore out of Corona, California, has already thrown for 352 yards this year, but he's also run for 131. That's an average of 8.2 a carry. He is a very dangerous athlete. Won the starting job in fall camp over Nick Foles. They are playing today without a great tight end, Rob Gronkowski, who has a bad back. And this is the end around the Dale Sean Dean. Tackled by Prater. All right, let's hit our impact players here. Nick Grigsby. You look at him, the number two rushing leader in the country. 8.6 at Toad. I love to watch this guy play. Dale Sean Dean, he's got a catch in 28 games in a row at Sterling Lewis. So linebacker on defense as you saw in that opening series there. Lewis and his teammates better figure out something to do to slow down that Hawkeye offense. Third and about an inch. Tutoji is the blocking back in front of Grisby. That's a terrible exchange of Scott may have been stepped on coming out. He had to toss it instead of hand it off, and Spave was one of the first Iowa defenders in there to make the tackle. Very fortunate this football does not mishandle between Scott and Grigsby. You're seeing right now the inside of that Iowa defensive line smoking him in the mouth right now. And when those linemen take a drop step, the quarterback's got to get out of there. He's going to get stepped on, and that's exactly what happened. Keenan Pryor to punt to Paul Cheney Jr., who can fly. He waits at the 10. Chance one and the bounce goes out of his way as well down at the 22 yard line. A 28 yard kick. Everything going the way of the Hawkeyes right now and at home. They are up 7 0. ESPN's College Football brought to you by Acura, Acura, Advance, and Kingsford Charcoal in the Home Depot. Get your tailgate started right with Kingsford Charcoal from the Home Depot. On campus is the old Capitol building built in 1842. The state capitol was moved to Des Moines in 1857, and that building became the first permanent building owned by the university. with its second possession from the turn 22. And Brandon Weber, number three, a true freshman, will get a chance. 
to run from that tailback spot. Wager played his first game a week ago, 15 carries and 101 yards. He's a good one. Dives forward across the 25 to 26 behind a Brett Morse block. Peyton Fry, the legendary Iowa coach, has produced a lot of progeny out of this program. Bill Snyder, Kirk Ferentz, then the Stoops brothers, Bob and Mike. Jim Levitt. And Bo Pelini, who was uh, trying to resurrect that Nebraska program, along with Brett Beaton out of Wisconsin. That's impressive when you look at that list. Sure is. And that says a lot. And you see the consistency. They've got a game plan, a, kind of a, a, a blueprint for what they try to accomplish year in and year out here. And it works. Once again, the freshman tailback, Wager, out of Dakota Dunes, South Dakota. I, I just following Mike Stoops along the years and watching what he's done specifically at Arizona. He's gotten some players in there. He's recruited heavily into the state of Texas and brought out a lot of kids there with sure some size and, and some moxie, as they call it. And uh, Mike's just, he's had a plan, and, and this is a big season for him. He believes this team, as athletic as it is, has a chance to have a special run. This is a big game for him on the road to start the season. Well, that Arizona program had really fallen on hard times, and he resurrected it. Stands in with plenty of time. Trevin Wade and Trevin Wade touchdown. His third interception of the year. That one returned for 38 yards, and Stanzi would like to have that one back. Talk about a late throw. Late throw, bad route, terrible decision by Stancy. Said in the open that he has to make plays today, but he can't have negatives. Charge timeout, Iowa. Well, this is tough. You have to take a timeout because you don't have your extra point defense on the field. That hurts. Change of momentum is unbelievable, but when you look at this play and Ricky Stancy, what they're trying to accomplish, it, 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 just a bad job, a poor decision, first of all, of Stancy to throw the ball. He looks immediately from where he's going with it. The receiver has run, a, he has owed his route rather than coming down the line, so he didn't give the quarterback a chance, or at least himself a chance to fight off the defensive back, and it was a nice job of Trevor Wade. Wade saw the eyes of Stancy. There was nothing deceptive about that from the beginning. He looked exactly where he was going to throw the ball. Big play by that Arizona defense, which is loaded with speed. And Zendejas on for the point after. And we are tied at seven. Just and we want that. Just like that, Mark Stoops is deep and stepped up. Kevin Wade with a great angle for the ball. Not nearly strong enough arm by Ricky Stancy to get it to the flat on that kind of throw. Arizona doesn't have a first down yet, but they are tied with Iowa at seven, courtesy of an interception return. O'Meara and Spave are deep to return the kickoff from Zendejas. Spave will bring it out of the end zone, and that wasn't a good decision as he is decked short of the 13th by Robert Golden. Tonight on ABC Saturday Night Football, it's Colt McCoy and the number two ranked Texas Longhorn looking for payback when the Texas Tech Red Raiders come into Texas Memorial Stadium. Texas Tech in Texas on ABC Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines tonight at 8 o'clock. Right, it's going to be a dollar for Tech's defense to cover up all of the options of Texas, particularly Colt McCoy's legs and his running ability. Robinson is back in as the Iowa running back, and he will get the carry. Nice hole straight up the middle. Robinson with a good move up near the 30 yard line. Javier Kelly, the outside linebacker, made the tackle. But so far, even with the All American candidate Balaga not in the lineup, this rebuild Iowa offensive line 
Wow, look at that push, Mike. I mean, you, you're talking about driving them back three or four yards. I mean, there's a bow in that Arizona's defensive line. Excellent. Fitting up on the right guy, the assignment, blocking up front, helping those freshmen running back. Now, these five guys have a combined 109 starts. You take Balaga out of there, and there are still some real good running backs. And around, Sandeman. Able to turn the corner after the 38 yard line. Alan Sandeman, two time All State. Check it, Paul Cheney got the carry. He's the little track star. 60 meters and 200 meters. Now, Ken O'Keefe, the offensive coordinator, trying to get the focus back on this offense after that big turnaround play, the interception on the last series, and, and get them back to executing. You know, when he started this game out, he went pass, run, and then a bunch of passes. So he's got them off balance at Arizona. He just doesn't need Stanzi trying to throw the ball across the field on those long throws. Second down, call it a yard. And they'll take a shot. Stanzi down the middle, nobody home. As his all-star tight end, Moyaki went to the outside, and Stanzi or Reisner, rather, the tight end, went to the outside. Stanzi threw it down the middle. Kirk Ferentz told us in meetings this week that he felt like that his quarterback, Ricky Stanzi, had left some plays on the field. He this left one there. <laughs> this qualifies for Coach Ferentz as one of those left-on-the-field plays. And Ricky just needs to settle down and, and see the game, uh, relax a little bit there, and, and let the play develop for him. Of course, a lot of times, it's also the receiver's fault. He will make an incorrect read and go the wrong way, and the quarterback's already released the ball. So now on third and one, you've got to get the first down, and Robinson back to that task and drives hard across the 40-yard line, and they'll get a new set of downs. The one statement made that, that I wrote down regarding Adam Robinson in our meeting with the coaches was that they thought he had okay vision. Well, I think he's improved that today. In my opinion, he's had really good decisions with his feet. Run with your feet, and they'll get you to the hole, right? Your eyes, you know, your yeah. feet follow your eyes. Yeah, I'm getting there. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Well, you knew how to do it. We know that. <laughs> don't, don't try to think too much up there. Just go run. Of course, Sean Green was such a great player a year ago as a running back. Nice peg by Stanzi. And there's the tight end, Reisner. Who gets it out to the 48-yard line. Green had 1,850 yards rushing a year ago. He was the Dope Walker Award winner. And Jewel Hampton was going to replace him this year. And then Hampton hurt a knee that he had injured before. So it's down to a redshirt freshman and a freshman. But Sean Green was the real deal here. And, and, and I, I really believe, you know, he was a special player that could carry the load by himself. Right now, they've got a unique situation where they've got two good young runners and two equals one in this case, and it's not a bad deal. Robinson again. Running hard and dragging Ricky, uh, dragging Ricky Elmore, number 44, with him. Yeah, but you're going to see now that, that Mark Stoops, the defensive coordinator, he's going to bunch up, get a lot tighter to that line of scrimmage. He's not going to allow the success on the ground by Iowa's ground game. He respects them now. Well, you move the eighth man in the box, which they are more than willing and capable of doing, and it's usually Cam Nelson. For the other safety, Robert Bowden. Stanzi straight back to throw, but quick out. Again caught by Reisner. Now, Reisner, we have not seen Moyaki, who is a big time, big time tight end. There had been rumors going around, unconfirmed by the coaching staff, that he had tweaked an ankle in practice and might not be able to play. Yeah, another dangerous throw here. The, the angle of which these linebackers in the secondary are going underneath and trying to beat the routes. Very lucky there that Xavier Kelly doesn't pick that one off as well. Well, you want to see Stansy put a little more oomph on some of these, don't you? I mean, the interception would just sort of float it out. Yeah, depends on who you're pulling for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Stanzi steps up this time and caught from behind. Nice play by Elmore. 250-pound defensive end and Don, Donald Horton, the nose tackle, who is very quick and athletic, was collapsing the pocket up the middle. 
You know, that's a that's a really big blow to this offense if they're tied in. Tony Moyaki can't go today. I mean, he's uh, obviously a a dependable receiver, a leader up there as a senior. Uh, had 10 catches in the opening game. Yeah. So on the Mackey Award list, and yeah. anytime you're on that one, you're a good tight end. They have had six tight ends since the year 2000 out of Iowa drafted into the NFL. Six. That's ridiculous. Cheney and Sandman are in as extra wide receivers on second and long. Out of the shotgun. Good protection again. Underneath. And Cheney is brought down at the 42 yard line. Iowa has already run 22 offensive plays. Arizona has only three. They don't have a first down, but most importantly, they have a touchdown. Two weeks ago that we are this announced That's teams right. had that, right? Last right. week we came out, South Carolina had 23 snaps to three yeah. for Georgia to start the game. That was a crazy number. When we show up, somebody's not going to do something on offense. <laughs> Third down and four, and we're told now that Moyaki is a definite scratch for Iowa. That's a huge blow when you figure Bulaga, the starting left tackle, is also out. This is going to be good enough to get a first down. Sindeman makes a good catch. Stands he threw it where only he could catch it at the 33-yard line. Now Mark Stoops has sat back long enough and he figured he's going to dial up something, try to put a little pressure and get to Ricky Stancy. Offensive line does a nice job of bunching them up, three-step, get rid of the football. You know the down in the distance. I really like this Ken O'Keefe coached offense. They're very disciplined, other than the one long throw across the field by Stancy in the last year. They have converted five of six third down opportunities. Robinson. When you're right about the Arizona defense, they have decided the only thing we can do is take the run away, and they they have done it very effectively on the last two, three plays. Yeah, but you know what I'm, I'm seeing here is that even without Moyaki out there, that the backup tight end Alan Reisner, he is he's done a nice job of giving him some options. You know, he's still putting pressure on that linebacker level. Well, even if you're the backup tight end at Iowa, it means you have skill. That's a great point. It's not like they've, they've recruited a mullet, right? No. <laughs> Just fill the hole. <laughs> this will be the 12th play of this drive. The opening drive was a sustained one. Blitz coming. Oh, dangerous pass by Ricky Stanzi. Another one. And, and, you know, a different look this time by Mark Stoops and the defense when they blitz. They're putting pressure in the middle, but what they're trying to do is cross those linebackers. They're trying to confuse Iowa's offensive linemen. You'll see in the middle of your screen here. You'll watch, watch the, the linebackers, how they cross up. Linebacker and left guard, really, left guard and the running back got lucky that they weren't called for holding there. And Robinson, the tailback, at only 205 pounds, did a great job on blitz pickup, which is not what you expect to see out of young running backs. Or guys who are 205 pounds. He really stuck his nose in there. Running out of time here on third down. They'll get the playoff. High snap. Stansy in trouble. And down he goes. Back at the 47-yard line. They took him out of field goal territory. And it was Corey Hall, number 21. Backup linebacker after Sterling Lewis. Ready to start the second quarter here in Iowa City. Kinnick Stadium at the University of Iowa. And after a loss of 16 on the third down blitz, Iowa will have to punt away. They have dominated this game. You see, Arizona's only gained seven yards, but what's not on there is the one big 38-yard interception return that has tied this game at seven. Douglas goes back to his 10 yard line for Ryan Donahue's punt. Donahue averaging 41 yards a kick so far during the young season. High floater. Takes a great bounce and down around the 11 yard line. 35-yard kick, no return. Good job by the punting unit, particularly Donahue. The 
if you live in the Boston area or well, let's try the Chicago area if it's just your heart that never left the city log on to ESPN Chicago.com the coverage of all the local teams and more in-depth information than you can get anywhere else Arizona takes off inside the 10 and it's the quarterback Scott just a plan run and he's out across the 40 where Tyler Sash had to make the tackle a gain of 27 yards for Arizona and Scott a very talented athlete only the fourth play you're going to see a design quarterback draw with the lead getting up in there by your quarterback and Scott is a guy who can run he can throw it as well but this offense has to get a little rhythm I like the design call there by Sonny Dykes the offensive coordinator followed Conan Ami and I we were just looking to barrel into somebody going downfield. Grigsby trying to get outside. Nothing there. Picks up maybe two across the 40-yard line. And let's go back to the studio for an update. And Matt, I have an idea. Tim Tebow is going to be wanting to knock on the door all day long. The screen that Grigsby brought down as soon as he touched the ball. Nice play by Jeremiah Hunter, and then Carl Kluge came over to finish it off. Okay. And, and that's a well-designed play. That that play, if the offensive lineman had yeah. picked up the Mike linebacker, we had two linemen there, Arizona's offensive lineman standing there, and let the linebacker run right by them. That's a 10-yard gain minimum if they just turn and look inside for their man. It will be third and six. Arizona's had only one good play on offense so far, and that was the quarterback draw. Scott, protection finally breaks down. He takes off again and knocked out of bounds. His dive got him close to the sticks, but they're going to mark him where he took off back at around the 47-yard line. And Pat Anger, the middle linebacker, got out there and got just enough of the quarterback so that he could not get the first down. It's A-N-G-E-R-E-R, -E -E pronounced anger. And, and, you know, we talked about that in the meeting last night. What, where did that, was there some kind of decision made in the family? Like, let's get together, let's get rid of the er, -er. Instead of anger? -er? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he gets anger -er later. <laughs> Prior to punt to Cheney, who stands at the 10. There's movement in the backfield, no flag. That catch made it to 17-yard line. I wonder how they missed that. He, he, he was able to reset. He's got to be reset for a second. I'm not sure he was reset. 36-yard punt, no return. That's a five-yarder for him. That's number 28 on the Buffalo Wild Wings top 30 plays in the last 30 years. We'll reveal number 27 next Saturday starting at 3.30 Eastern. I remember that one. Uh -huh. It was, uh, I just like to try to tackle Stein Cooler. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Iowa takes over inside its own 20. Good play fake by Stancy. Throws on the run and incomplete as Brandon Wager will get his second turn at running back. So far they have alternated Robinson and Wager by possession. Reisner was running across the field. The number two tight end coming back across. And, and I just think Ricky Stancy right now, he's kind of lost the top of your screen. Tight end Dragon coming, coming across. He's going to be open back there. There's a pocket. And, and just pushing the ball down the field. I, I just don't think that they're see, he's seeing the game right now uh, uh, as well as he should be. He's missed on some deep throws through the first couple of ball games. They want to take several shots. Out of the shotgun this time, throws incomplete. And Sandeman was out there, but he was well covered by Trevin Wade. And you can tell already, Trevin Wade's pretty good corner. Yeah, he's a good corner, verified right here by this throw that was ill-advised. Early in the game, the only points that Arizona had. Lucky there on that out ball as well. 
Getting him out of the pocket is really what Arizona's figured out they've got to do. They're crossing up at the front of the line of scrimmage, doing some X, X stunts with their defensive linemen and linebackers, and they've somewhat slowed down that Iowa offensive line. Stanzi right now only six out of 14 for 60 yards and has a pick. Blitz coming. Stanzi has time. That one's incomplete as there was contact between Strauss and Wade. Just out of rhythm. You know, you, the, the line did their job. They picked up the, the blitz, the little cross they had there on the inside, coming with five and just didn't. Tried to push, forcing it down the field. At some point, you say, wait a minute, Trevin Wade's over here, so I'm not going to throw it over here anymore. Yeah, could be. And the other thing is, at some point, you say, let's get in there and start hitting them in the mouth and running the football. Douglas, the deep man, waits at his own 40 for Donahue's punt. And Arizona should get good field position out of this. And we had movement up front. Delay of game. Oh, the delay of game. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. Every since ever since that interception by Wade for the You're touchdown, right. they didn't get the unit on for extra point block. It's just been a little bit disorganized. Off the side of his foot and gets a big bounce for Iowa. A break for the Hawkeyes as that ball rolls down to the 37-yard line. It'll show in the paper tomorrow morning that was a 50-yard punt. ESPN's College Football brought to you by Lexus and the new HS Hybrid. And the Sears Blue Electronics crew. Sears, life well spent. You got to stop here if you're in Iowa City. You can get anything, but this is this is the best. They call this a pie shake. It's a milkshake with milk, ice cream, and they stuff a piece of cake or pie in it. Now my cardiologist is listening. I haven't had one. But by golly, I'm going to go get one. <laughs> and I'll come and see you in a month. Either that or I'll take yours. Still make two. <laughs> Pressure coming from Iowa. And the incompletion as Scott set his feet. Couldn't get away from Broderick. Bins and throws incomplete. And, and I think that was a breakdown in the pass. Out. There wasn't an option underneath with the boot going around at the top of the field. And, and you know, how can you blame this Arizona offense for not having any rhythm right now? That's only the eighth play they've run. So when you look at this, you know, they, 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 there's no rhythm there. They've not been on the field enough. Their defense needs a break badly. Grigsby has been a non factor, the second leading rusher in the country. Scott double pumps. Throws short, might get a completion for a couple of yards, and that's what they're going to say is Douglas will make the catch for about four as Adrian Claiborne, number 94, the leader on that defensive line, was applying pressure on Scott. And, and you know what? This offense is designed to where the ball is, should have been gone. So you, you've got great route recognition by Iowa's defense and not many options for Scott to throw the ball to. Well, you're right. Now third down and six. Scott in the shotgun. Four-man rush. Grigsby on the draw. A lot of quickness across midfield. Breaks a tackle. 40. Nice cutback. Grigsby with blockers in front. 20. 10. To the one. What a play by Grigsby. They have had two offensive plays. A quarterback draw for 27 and that run for 58. Well, when you get Grigsby the ball like this in space, you've got to make sure that when somebody's over here and they're watching where Grigsby's going, one false step allowed the center, Colin Baxter, to get over there. And from this point on, Here's a guy that's got 10 free speed. He just works down the field. Nobody can, cut, can, can, can catch it. 
Grigsby. Whoa. Whacked in the backfield. He lost three. What a play by David Cato. The backup strong safety came flying off the corner and hit Grigsby after he took one step. And, and you know, this here is when Cato comes in off the corner like that right there, he's going to the football. If you hesitate, you miss it. It's timing. Grigsby also ran into his own tackle, Adam Grant. He wasn't going any further after he hit him. Second and goal. Scott wants to throw. Batted down and complete the one. Knocked down by Spave. It was intended for Terrell Turner. And a little quick post. Tough to defend, but he did it. And, and Matt Scott, you watch his feet when he throws the football. He pitter patters with his feet. Watch him. Pitter, patter, delay. Let the ball go. This is an offense that's really struggled this year in the red zone with touchdowns. Four touchdowns in nine trips. Not good. Last year, they had 75% of the time scoring touchdowns there. So they're not executing with the timing like they need to. Now they're going to spread the field with four wide receivers on third and goal. Scott forced out of the pocket. Throws at the last minute. Too high incomplete. Tried to get Dave Roberts, but it was too high. Boy, that's where a guy like Scott is so dangerous at the three-yard line. He put so much pressure on the defense. Run or pass. Pulled out at the last second, but he couldn't hit it. You know, and I'm very impressed with Iowa's defense and their coverage, their recognition of the routes. They are hugging the jerseys of these receivers at Arizona. Well, that's pretty good when you stop them after it's first and goal. This will be a 21-yard field goal by Zendejas, who's had one really good game and one really poor game. This the equivalent of an extra point. And Arizona takes the lead here at Iowa, their first lead of the ball game, 10-7. We'll be back to Iowa City in the sold out Kinnick Stadium in just a moment. Jimmy Johnson racing for a historic fourth straight championship. Another four-time winner, Jeff Gordon, regular season points leader Tony Stewart. Look, you make a little history of their own. The chase for the NASCAR sprint for New Hampshire. Our coverage begins tomorrow, 1 Eastern on ABC. And there are the leaders. Mark Martin with the advantage. I know you're a big fan of NASCAR. You know, you'd love those left turns and staying in the same direction all the time. The way I like to drive. <laughs> Cheney wrapped up. She got to the 29-yard line. Now here's a trend for you that's not good at Iowa. This now before the interception, 12 plays, 67 yards, and average in 5.6 per. Right since the interception, 17 plays and 2.4 per tote. You're right. That's not good. Now for today's Aflac trivia question. What Iowa lineman finished second to John David Crow in the 1957 Heisman Trophy race? John David Crow, the great running back at Texas A&M. Good man. Good <laughs> trivia question. Interesting answer. Became a movie star. Hint, hint, hint. Stanzi after the play fake. Flag down, interference on Cam Nelson. These Arizona DBs have been all over the receivers, and this will be the second interference call they've been hit for. You know what? This is a late throw again to the outside and deep. Way too much air on the ball. Pass interference. Defense number 20. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. And, and I know Mike Stoops is mad right now about this. Nelson had the play made. He didn't need to put his left hand. Watch the left hand of Nelson as he gets in there. See, it's on his left shoulder, the receiver. And he's there. Go ahead and get on the other side and block the ball. Don't put the left hand on the receiver. I get back to running. I was very fortunate right now uh, to not have had another one or two interceptions. Well, Arizona showing eight guys in the box. And that's one of the reasons they can stop Adam Robinson. Xavier Kelly comes up. 
Cam Nelson, number 20. He's right on the line of scrimmage. Yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead and support what you're saying there with some video and show you. And, and here it is. Look at all these numbers of, bo of bodies in there and even a safety that's close to the line of scrimmage. They don't respect Stansy right now. They're not concerned with him. Plus the fact Mark Stoops, the defensive coordinator, he's got four guys in that secondary back there that all have played corner at one time or the other, even his safety. So he knows he's got coverage back there. And when you have eight men up front, you just can't block them all. Play action fake. Stanzi's in trouble. Got away and throws it. There's the flag. That's going to be intentional grounding as Ricky Elmore came in and would not let go. Now you're right about that interception. The uh, the complexion of this game is just grounding. Number 12 on the offense. The ball is placed at the spot of the foul with a loss of down. Third down. Now you want your quarterback to be making an effort to get rid of the ball and avoid the sack, but he just makes things worse. Here. Late with his head turning around to find his tight end that was right in front of him. When that when the quarterback's running that boot, he has to get his head around immediately and expect somebody in his face. But he was tardy. He sold the fake so long that he had the sack right in his face. It's third and 23 after a great start. Iowa's been going in the wrong direction. Delay on third and long. Robinson's already made about five guys miss, and there he goes. To the 25-yard line. Holy cow. That play should have gone nowhere, and Robinson just would not stop. He kept peeking and dodging until there wasn't anybody left. We expected 81 Tony Moyaki to be in the game, but 82 is the real clearer here. You're tied in. You're going to see him once he gets down here, once he blocks, he allows Robinson the freedom to get down the field. Alan Reisner mugs his guy, kept him off Robinson. There's vision for you. Yes, sir. Not to mention determination. 11 carries 87 yards for Robinson. That'll get Wager into the game to give Robinson a blow, and Wager comes outside. Down to the 22-yard line. Jonathan Hollins, a junior college transfer, made the tackle, and there's a penalty mark. Holding, 52 offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. And that was the center, Raphael Eubanks, another senior, one of four senior starters on that line who is going to be called for a hold. I, I'm starting to understand now why Kirk Ferentz said that he wished that it were October playing this game, that he's got some growth to go through in September. I'm seeing it now. You get a big play to finally pick you up offensively, right? You've been in the tank doing nothing. You get a big play, and you come out, and you have a holding call on first down. So it's first and 20 after they converted a monster third down. Stanzi the screen, and Stanzi got his running back blown up by Corey Hall. Wager is waiting on that football, and he had to wait a couple of steps too long, and they lit him up like a Christmas tree. They didn't do that in high school to him, I promise you. And I say what he's waiting on. He's waiting on his lineman to get out there who was tardy to the call. Vanderveld didn't get there in front. The timing was off, so one two things needs to happen. Vanderveld needs to get there quicker, or Wager needs to slow down and stay deeper, allowing his lineman to get down the field. The third thing happened. Wager almost got killed. <laughs> Too many multiple options. Yes, sir. Blitz coming. Stands, he hangs in the pocket and throws. He's got the first down to McNutt. McNutt on his feet to the 10, down a block. To the five, dives out of bounds. They'll mark it at the one. Gain of 34. Now McNutt made a big catch on the first series. All starts on the inside with the Iowa offensive line with the protection. You're going to see the blitzing that takes place in the middle of the field, but they're not able to get there. There's your stunts in the middle. Pick up by the backs. An outstanding job. And the delivery down the field. Didn't Stancy look like a different guy? Step up on his front foot, throw the ball. I was just going to say, this has been the most psychotic game I have seen in a long, long time. Robinson is back in there, dives, touchdown.
go back to that third and 23 where they ran a nice safe play. It maybe is going to get you 10, get you better field position, and they break it for a ton. Just as soon as you think one team has turned a corner and is dominating this game, boom, it turns around. <laughs> 70 play drive and 327. Murray with a point after, and Iowa has regained the lead on visiting Arizona. 14 to 10. You see Adam Robinson, the freshman, this time two hands on the football when he goes across the goal line. Take a look at our Pacific Life game summary from here in Iowa City. In a 14-10 game, Robinson credited with a two-yard touchdown run, even though he lost the ball at the goal line. And then an ill-advised throw, and Trevin Wade with a 38-yard interception return that put Arizona on top. And then Robinson again, as Craig pointed out, this time with better ball security in two hands. And it's 14 to 10. Yeah, very interesting game, isn't it? It really is. It certainly hasn't followed any pattern other than irregular. Yes. <laughs> That ball takes a funny bounce. It's loose. Remember, that is a free ball. And there's the scrum they're going to have to unpile. And they indicate that Arizona got it back. Dangerous, dangerous play. And Tolan came up on it. But Nick Booth was the guy who got at the bottom of that pile and came up with a football. Indecision, three players over there. At that point there, make a decision, go get the football. The return is off. Make sure you recover the ball. So the Wildcats, who are 2-0, started their own 19-yard line. Grigsby's had the one big run, that's it. Otherwise, they had swarmed him under. Now for today's Aflac trivia question and answer. What Iowa lineman finished second to John David Crow in the 57 Heisman race? Alex Karras, who was a defensive lineman here, won the Outland Trophy winner, went on to be Mongo and knocked out a horse with a right cross. <laughs> <laughs> Blues and seven. <laughs> Scott on the roll has to tuck it and take off. They get him at the 25. All right, I, I got one for you now. If I'm in Arizona and I'm Sonny Dykes over there, his best weapon so far is the quarter. He's got to get Matt Scott's legs in the game more so that it opens up and it avoids. They've really suffered from not having their All-American tight end, Rob Gronkowski, in the game. Iowa's covering up the outside. Scott's got to pick up the pace with his leg. Grigsby has carried the ball five times for two yards, had another one that went 58. That's how dangerous he is. Third and long from the 25. Scott, with good protection over the middle, has the first down and more as he throws a perfect strike to Dave Roberts for 20. And that quieted the crowd, which had really gotten back into it. Uh, you know, Dave Roberts here, the, the, the cardinal sin of a defender is if you've got no help on the inside, don't get beat inside. 81 gets right inside Dave Roberts, and Scott, nice job of seeing it, getting him the football where he can catch it and run. Scott with a lot of upside as a sophomore. Very skilled athlete. Back to throw, hangs in the pocket, throws out of this strike. Same play, same result. Dave Roberts again. The coverage by Tyler Sash, the strong safety who had three picks a week ago. But he gave up a 24-yard completion that time. I'm not sure if you wrote it down on your board when you heard the note from the coach that said that Roberts wasn't fast, but he was reliable. Looks pretty fast to me running up the middle. Fast yeah. enough. <laughs> he plays fast. He's had two catches for 44 yards in the last two plays. Scott Grigsby on the delay. 
nowhere to go. Nice job on the outside by Spave, number 19, made the play turn back inside. You know what I'm really seeing in college football? Better defenses this year that their corners and their safety support when they see run and their keys show them that the run's coming. They're not sitting back. They're getting to the line of scrimmage and beyond. They're really forcing the issue on the blockers at the point of attack. Gain of two at second and eight with 345 on the clock. A very quick first half here at Iowa City. Grigsby again dances. Picks up about five down to the 23 yard line. The tackle by Pat Anger made first team all Big Ten on several preseason publications. Their third leading tackler. A year ago, he won over 100 tackles in the middle of this defense. Third and two. Can this Arizona offense sustain anything? Scott in the shotgun. Grigsby is back there with him. Iowa showing blitz. They come. Tipped and incomplete. One of the linemen got a hand up and blocked it. Looked like Clue. Guy of Caledonia, Missouri. And, and you know, a zone blitz here, you see Clue whenever you're, you're going to see backing out right here. And this is something that a young quarterback's just not used to seeing. And he went right to the passing line. Clue is right there. And so that's the hesitation, a little tip at the line of scrimmage. But, you know, if, if that ball comes through clean, that has a chance to be picked off and intercepted there by Clue. Well, Anger is going to get credit for that. Here's Zendejas. He'll try from 39. He's already hit a chip shot from 20, and it's a fake. And it's not going to work. Arizona goes with Keenan Cryer, who was the punter and the holder. And anger is right there and showed some anger and took him down. A big gamble backfires. Absolutely. This is a pre-designed call here. This isn't like they had something that they saw out there that made it an automatic if they had an angle block or something. This was designed and, and a gamble. You know, I, I like, if you're going to go for it, line up, run the football, throw the football. Don't get gimmicky down here. Go with your best guys is what you're saying? Amen. Rager. Nice hole off the left side up to the 38. How many times has momentum changed in the first half of this game? And, and you know, I, I go back to that. What's wrong with three points? You're on the road. There, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And, and your defense, you know your defense has been out there and they've been challenged a lot in this half. They've already had 36 or more snaps in this game to 20. So it's a, a tired defense. Plenty of time for Iowa. Two and a half minutes as they start this play, and Wager out of the backfield will make the catch. Buna Tui Halamaka, the middle linebacker, will make the tackle. Ricky Stanzi seems to have settled down a little bit after that really nice throw and that last blitz pickup that his old line and backs picked up. Wager and Robinson have been a very effective tandem at running back. Wager again hitting the backfield and taken down this time the kind of defensive play they really need and it was made by Earl Mitchell senior 6 2 295 a kid they feel has a chance to play at the next level yeah, he's just a smart good player plays with leverage a defensive line has done a nice job tonight the real the, the real success of Arizona's defense though has been on the inside when they're using the linebackers and they're crossing up trying to blitz and put Predator and confuse Stanzi. Big play here third and five with the clock running. Here they are again right up in here. See what they do. Yeah. Charge timeout. Iowa. We'll give them a chance to talk it over on third. In between four and five yards. Iowa with the lead on visiting Arizona. It's 14 10 here, a minute 17 to go in the half. Iowa faced with a third down. Can they keep the drive alive here? Do they give the ball back to Arizona with time running down here in the first half?
Very conservative call as they give the Wager on third and long, and he picks up only a yard. Elmore led the charge on defense, and now Arizona will use a timeout. I, I got the feeling, Mike, that was a charge timeout. Arizona. Check with me there because you had a you had six man nickel look inside the box so he thought he had a chance to run the ball as opposed to throwing it. Now we go to New York Matt Weiner for a Sports Center update right now Matt. All right Mike Sports Center right now presented by Sprint Tim Tebow's 46 career rushing touchdown puts him second on the SEC list but it was a Tebow interception that led to Tennessee's second field goal. Gators lead there by a touchdown and in Seattle Washington going toe to toe with the USC Steve Sarkeesian's Huskies tied up with the Trojans. Just have to love Locker. What a terrific player. He is really good. Absolutely. And you know Steve Sarkeesian is going to go into California and recruit and get a lot of good players out there in the Northwest. That's a one or two years away from being a really good program. Well, it would really help the Pac-10 to get them out of the basement. That was. Uh, it was really bad for a while. Yeah, and today, Cal going in and, and beating Minnesota at Minnesota, big. that was that was a big deal for that for the, for the Pac-10. Donahue will punt it away. Douglas waits inside his 20. Donahue has gotten a couple of poor kicks and got the bounce out of him this time. It's a rocket. Drives Douglas back to the five where he makes a mistake and Fair catches it there. Puts his team in a huge hole with 59 seconds left. 49 yard punt and no return, but Iowa only has one uh, timeout left, so they're really not probably going to be able to take advantage. ABC, Monday, 8 7 Central, the biggest dancing of the Stars cast ever assembled on center stage. 16 new stars, one epic season, ABC's Dancing with the Stars. The live three night premiere event starts Monday at 8 7 Central. On ABC. You ever wanted to be on Dancing with the Stars? You know what? I love the show. And uh, I, I, I just crack up when I watch athletes, former athletes that are on there. I, I love it. Emmett Smith, when he was there, did it. If you were on it, would we laugh or go, oh my golly, this guy can do it? You would say, man, that dude's got a little shake and bake to him. Oh, he right. can do it. Next season, Craig James, our nominee <laughs> for Dancing with the Stars. I get 10%. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> The standard agent fee applies. <laughs> Boy, the, the, the bonehead reception on the punt return there really cost Arizona a chance. If they start at the 20, you know, they might run a play or two and try to take advantage yeah. of those two timeouts. But all they can do right now is kill the clock. Mm. Play it safe and go in the locker room down by four. And in what I just said uh, earlier, a psychotic first half here at Iowa. I, I think right now if you're Mike Stoops you really got to feel pretty good about yourself. Arizona's not had, had many options uh, offensively. They haven't gotten it going yet offensively. So he's going to go to the locker room and say all right guys we played pretty poorly here. So we've got a chance and I would just got to stay the focus. Be interesting to see how both coaches adjust after the half. Our score at halftime Iowa 14 Arizona 10. Stay tuned for the halftime report from the studio after these messages. We are at Iowa at the half where Iowa is leading Arizona 14 to 10. It was a very strange first day. I, you know what if you're a coach for both sidelines right now you say to your team this is a tie game. You know we got a half a half to come out here a full half to come out here now and to and to play to win this game. Somebody's going to make a big play. All right, let's take a look at the city inside view. What do you have? For you? <laughs> We're going to show you the one big play so far for Arizona. How about that? <laughs> we talked about Nick Grigsby, their running back, being a big play maker, the number two rushing guy in the country, and how good he is. He did this all on his own, basically. This was the one time that I thought Iowa was hesitant, and they sat back, and Grigsby just kind of ran by them. But the defense of Iowa has been impressive. It's a combination of they've been impressive and Arizona's been unimpressive in their execution. But remember, Mike, they did get down to the red zone that one time, and their touchdown ability down there has a, continued to be a problem. Yes, they did. Arizona will receive. Antolin is the guy they want to get the football. He waits on the near side at the eight yard line. Antolin retreats to the one. 
had a hole, but it closed quickly as he reached the 27-yard line. Good tackle by Bruce Davis down on special team. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary at the half, and really these statistics really make no sense based on what happened because Arizona got almost all the charge on the one rushing play. And, and you know, when you look at the time of possession there, that's really way off for Arizona, a team almost averaging 40 minutes a game in time of possession. So maybe that's why this offense hasn't gotten on track. Perfect example of if you torture the numbers long enough, they'll tell you anything you want. <laughs> They go with the end around to no avail as De La Sean Dean is upended by the safety Brett Greenwood. This is a pretty good Iowa defense. They've got some speed sideline to sideline and beef in the middle. I came in thinking Arizona was going to be faster team. I really did. And, and I'm surprised at the team Me speed too. of Iowa. Every time Arizona's run a play like that, you go, uh-oh, and Iowa's covered most of them. Matt Scott to the shotgun. Pressure coming. Tries to set up a screen and badly overthrew it to Grigsby. That could have been a disaster. Pressure was coming from Klaber number 94. Now, I know Sonny Dykes comes from an offense in Mike Leach's system at Texas Tech, and they do a lot of screens, and there's coordination between quarterback, linemen, and backs. And he knows what it's supposed to look like, and that's not it. That this game, it's not happening. That's right. Whatever it's supposed to look like, that was not a picture of it. Scott in the shotgun. Three-man rush foul. Plenty of time. Scott hasn't tucked it yet. Now he does. Couldn't find anybody. And look at all the black shirts. That defense finally swarmed all over him. Christian Ballard had anger. And, and I think that right now, Scott's feeling the speed of this Iowa defense. He had a couple of three options here to let go of the football. They initially try to cross on the inside to confuse. You've got a flat that's open. I thought he should have thrown the ball right then. If you're going to run it, go ahead and get after it. You break, something like that. When you know the down and distance is kind of in front of you, go get it. What's the old saying? He who hesitates gets smacked in the mouth. Yep. Keenan Cryer to punt to Cheney. Paul Cheney Jr. waits at his 25 with the flag down. And they do it again. Full start. Number two on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. Keola Antolin. Safe special team. Safe to say this isn't what Mike Stoops drew up in the in the halftime locker room right no. he didn't say let's come out and do this right here and so far not the homecoming he was looking forward to either I'm not so certain that that Arizona's football team's not surprised as well with the speed of Iowa I'll bet they you know what? I really do I think that, that the team's got to readjust their their minds right now and realize they're in a, a tough game with a fast opponent well, Mike Stoops said it was the, the fastest team he's ever had at Arizona. They know they're pretty quick. And yet Iowa, a team known for far more for power and beef than for speed, has matched the 51-yard punt, no return. Iowa will start at its own 20-yard line. Iowa will start from its own 20-yard line, leading 14-10 over Arizona. Early third quarter from a sold out Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. Adam Robinson, the tailback, to start this series. He and Wager have alternated in this ball game, and he'll get about a yard. Tonight on ABC, number two, Texas and the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Remember what happened last year? Texas Tech in Texas on ABC Saturday Night Football, presented by Southwest Airlines. It's tonight at 8 Eastern. For more, log on to ESPN.com. It's time for revenge for Hook'em Horns. Yeah, you know, that revenge, it's not working too much for Florida right now. In no. Game with Tennessee, you better worry about just execution and winning again. Stands it. Sandman makes the catch across the 30. It's good enough for a first down. Once again, Trevin Wade was the guy on the tackle. Back to that last 
huge play. Seconds to go, down by one. Graham Harold, a Michael Crabtree, went into the end zone with one second left. I may be the only person in the country who think Crabtree made a mistake. I thought he should have gotten out of bounds to set up the field goal. If he turns back in and he's tackled, the game's over. Those two defensive backs felt the same way. <laughs> Robinson plows ahead, didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. Your old Mitchell led the charge again. Now, Ken O'Keefe right now, the offensive coordinator, is trying to figure out uh, how to be conservative, but just enough off the edge that he can keep the football, right? Two first down calls, running the football, and then the play action pass. So he, he, he's probably well aware that Arizona's got some speed in the secondary and they're pretty good in coverage. And he doesn't want to take a chance at Stan's going to throw a four-point lead, you don't want to go into a shell, do you? No, not absolutely not. But down here, you don't want to do what he did early in the first quarter and throw a pick six either. And that resulted in the only touchdown. Stanzi after the play action fake to trying to set up the screen and they wanted to get Kyle Callaway the right tackle out there to throw a block but Cam Nelson had other ideas and Nelson was out there to make the tackle. Well let me tell you this there's a blitz from the top of the field where that ball was thrown to and if the tackle is missed right there you got a lot of pasture that horse would have eaten. <laughs> That's a Texas thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he'd have mowed him down. Blitz coming from the top of the field. There's one defender oh, out there. Yeah. One right. defender. Well, it's a huge gamble by Cam Nelson. You're right. If he misses, there is nobody else home. Blitz coming. Stanzi with a quick throw. That'll be shy of a first down, however, out to the 38-yard line. Sandeman again, this time tackled by Devin Ross. A couple of really good corners on this club. You know what? Their secondary is really strong. There's no weakness, as Mark Stoops right. says. The, the, there is no weakness on our defense. We're all pretty much the same. And Golden and Cam Nelson, who are the two safeties, appear to have corner skills as well as being outstanding tacklers. So that's a pretty good group. Donahue to kick to Douglas. We'll call all of this one. Douglas wisely lets this one go into the end zone. 62 yard punt, but a net of 42 in Arizona State will have the ball at the 20. Down by four. 10.05 to go. Third quarter from Iowa. ESPN's College Football. Brought to you by. The all-new Taurus from Ford, Drive One, and Prescription Flomax. AT&T. Love their wrestling team in Iowa. Last season, they were undefeated. Coached by Tom Brands, a three-time NCAA champion, and a 1996 Olympic gold medalist. Their first official practice next Friday, September 25th. They're already out there working on their own. Arizona starts from its own 20. Can they finally get the offense on track? That means Grigsby. And he's dragged down from behind. He wants a flag. He says it was a horse collar. Dragged down by Claybrook. Well, the world of college athletics and all of us involved in this sport suffered a huge loss this week with the passing of NCAA President Miles Brand. Before taking over the NCAA, he was president of the universities of Indiana and Oregon, spent time at other schools as well, including a stint as the head of the philosophy department, philosophy department at the University of Arizona. Our thoughts and prayers go out to everyone who knew Miles Brand, his friends and his family. Grigsby on the toss tries to cut it back. Boy, Iowa, you can just tell they have been coached up defensively so well all week, knowing Grigsby was going to do all sorts of stuff on offense, and they're ready for it. Absolutely. Tyler Sash, you're going to see coming Personal to the foul. field. Face mask. 42 right defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Well, watch Sash, though. When he gets up into the pocket there, up into the lane, forces the runner back into his pursuit. That's why they've been shutting him down in the face mask at the very end. So Jeremiah Hunter. Boy, what a big handful. Man, Mike, you know, you're talking about Grigsby. He's had a 58-yarder. Scott, the quarterback's had a 27-yarder. Other than that, this team has done nothing, averaging two or less. Yeah, no offense at all. Still, they're only down by four points. 
scored their touchdown on the interception return. And coming from behind, applying the pressure, Matt Scott never had a chance because Claybert drilled him. Big number 94, the leader of this defensive line. And, and you know what? I'm watching Matt Scott, and I'm trying to figure him out. He's a deliberate reader. He's got a lot of confidence in his protection up front. But step up, step up, step up. He stayed in the same spot, right? If that quarterback steps up in rhythm and makes the delivery, he throws the ball to a wide open crossing route. He's only four out of ten for 50 yards. Grigsby in the eye on second and ten. Scott wants to go deep. Pass is underthrown, but caught at the 16-yard line. And that's Davis on Dean. Now they wave it off. And the Arizona sideline really upset at that call. Yeah, you know, the one thing that Matt Scott did there, he had one-on-one -on -one deep. Had a lot of feel that he could throw the ball, too. And Dean is saying, I caught a throw the challenge play. Uh, you know what? Well, never believe a wide receiver. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. That ball. No, that ball's on the ground. Well, no wonder you never believe a wide receiver. He might have. He might think that he caught the football, but it, 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 the ground assisted there. Well, remember the college system. The previous play is under further review. Every play is reviewed, and the coach, the uh, officials upstairs, take a look at it. Boy, and the Arizona sideline is just going nuts. But uh, we saw the replay. They don't have a gripe. I don't think so. We'll check it out when we come back. Catch or no? Don't think so. After further review, the play stands as called on the field. Third down. After the review, they determined it was an incomplete pass or there was not enough evidence to overturn the call, so it leaves Arizona with a third and 10 from their own 40-yard line. Scott with plenty of time. Now it breaks down, and so does Scott at the 43. What a tough defensive line. Claiborne makes the tackle again. Only four guys coming. They dropped seven and they covered it well enough so that Matt Scott couldn't find anybody. Uh, it will remind you again that Rob Gronkowski, All-American tight end, is not playing in this football game. And he is a significant threat in the passing game. It's missing here. And Matt Scott doesn't have that outlet in this ball game. Caney on the run and chased out of bounds at about the 16-yard line by Mike Turner, a punt of 41. Let's go to the studio in Times Square. Here's Matt Weiner. Matt. All right, Mike, time now for our AT&T All-America Player of the Week update. How's Java Best? It's going to climb some Heisman charts this week after a 131-yard day, including a career-high five touchdowns and a win at Minnesota. Text vote to 345-345 on your mobile phone. You can cast your vote and maybe win a chance at the national championship. Big win for them at 35-21. Iowa again in a hole. They'll start from the 16-yard line. Wager back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Good play by A.J. Eads. Interesting. Try to read though. up on the players uh, before the game. A.J. Eads is the only football player I ever heard of who wants to be an athletic director. <laughs> well. You know what, he, he might ought to go interview a few of those guys to let them know that that's not such a cushy job all the time, you know. <laughs> Raising money is the number one issue now for ADs. Yeah, for sure. If you can raise money and glad hand it, then you got a chance. Stanzi in the pocket, collapses around it. 
So the man around the 12 yard line, Earl Mitchell, Ricky Elmore in on the tackle. Uh, you know what, Mike, you get the feeling in this football game here, if Arizona's going to win, it will not be their offense that wins again. No. It's got, the defense has to step up, and, and Mike Stoops knows that. Mark Stoops' brother, D coordinator, knows that. This defense better be nice enough to understand that. Next turnover may decide the game if there is one. Remember the last third and very long, they went with a draw. And it worked tremendously to Robinson. Wager is in there right now. The true freshman. Danzy, a couple of pump fakes, throws the out. Oh, boy, was that dangerous. And Trevin Wade, again, was the guy who had a shot at an interception. If you're going to be late, you better have a lot of mustard on it. Now, what you asked me while ago, Mike, you said, hey, what about being conservative and going in a shell, huh? Yes, sir. You, and down here, Ken O'Keefe, the offensive coordinator, this is the last throw he wants to have done. And, and, and the thing that I've noticed now with Stanzi is when he makes a decision to throw the ball somewhere, he first looks at it, then gets his feet, and then he delivers over there. And, man, he's lucky that Wade didn't take that one back. Donahue, another big kick. And tremendous coverage. Douglas just didn't have a chance. William Below got down there. It's only a three-yard return after a punt of 58 yards. In the final seconds of the season opener, Iowa found themselves a field goal away from an upset loss to Northern Iowa twice. So we'll call it a 41-yard field goal. Snap, spot, kick it down. It's blocked. It's blocked. It's blocked. Here's the snap, the spot, the kick is blocked again. I can't believe Hawks win. Hawks win. Oh my goodness. No team had ever blocked consecutive field goals in a ball game, let alone the last two plays of the game. You know, and this 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 football team here, Arizona, uh, it, it's just missing offensively. You know, just out of sync. The receivers are open there. Uh, they had the ball that went through the hands of De La Sean just a moment ago, and Dean should have come up with it for a big play. They just are not in sync. Well, Scott's missed on his last five. He's only thrown for 50 yards in this game. Just one of the top offenses in the country coming in after two games. Of course, they had not played big time opponents. That one is incomplete, nearly picked off by Greenwood. Keep in mind, Arizona came into this game number five in the country in rushing. 305 and a half yards a game, thanks mostly to Grigsby. Today, they've rushed for 124, but most of that came on one play. The rest has been virtually insignificant. Now, this is a football team that had scored in 14 straight quarters. They had scored in 24 last 28 quarters. It's a very productive scoring offense. It just doesn't look it today. No. And their only touchdown came on the interception return. Scott trying to direct traffic here. Four-man rush. They got him again. Straight up the middle, Carl Kluge. And he just drove his man right into the backfield. Oh. Now they're not even having to blitz or come with five guys, anybody off the court. It's just a full man foot. And you know what, Carl Kluge, the, the play before, it was Broderick Benz on the outside. Kluge's on the inside and just watch the push, the power, bull rush. And they were worried here at Iowa about losing experience from the inside and not being strong enough inside. I think tonight, or this afternoon, we've seen that these guys are strong on the inside. That was impressive. Paul Cheney Jr., this time way to his 35 for Clyde Punk. Close, huh? Avoids the first wave. Got a block at the corner. Midfield taken out of bounds in Arizona territory. Paul Cheney Jr. with a 23-yard return after a punt of 45. Sterling Lewis took him out of bounds. But Iowa, with great field position now, they'll start on the plus side of the 50-yard line. 
Jimmy Johnson is primed for a historic fourth straight championship. Jeff Gordon, another four-time winner in regular season point leader Tony Stewart, hope to make history of their own. It's the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup at New Hampshire tomorrow, 1 o'clock Eastern on ABC. Stanzi, loose ball incomplete. This is not the, the intended on the ground fumble ruski that we've seen before <laughs> earlier today. They got very lucky here at Iowa that that ball didn't go somewhere else. But Dace Richardson, the left guard, when he pulled around, it just the timing was off. And, and, and you had a feeling that Iowa's offense and their football team, after that punt return, nice field position, they were going to come out and do something with it. Put, they've got they better put Arizona away. This is one of those games that you let the other guy linger around yeah. and all of a sudden boom out of the woods here they come. And when you get field position like this to start a drive you really want it to pay off. Stanzi again out in the flat this time it's complete. And that's Strauss. Trey Strauss who suffered through a collarbone injury last year caught only 13 passes. He's had an injury riddled pass for this ball club. And Iowa playing without two stalwarts up front. Again, Bulaga, the starting left tackle, an Alton Trophy candidate, and an All-American candidate, Tony Moiaki, the tight end, unable to go because of an injury this week. Stanzi on third and five. Pressure coming, floats it down the middle. He's got the tight end, Reisner. 29 yards, 6'3", 235, got behind the coverage, and a perfect toss that time by Stanzik. Well, you got multiple mishaps here by this Arizona defense on this particular play here. Robert Golden, number one, you're going to see he should be back in the back, but the linebackers, they lose the tight end. Tight end down the middle. Nobody's back there. There comes number one, Golden. He's got to get over and stay back. There wasn't any pressure on him on the other side of the field with a receiver. First and 10 from the 12. Robinson back in at running back. Tries to get outside. Looks like he had some running room if he'd have cut it inside, but made the decision to go wide, and Sterling Lewis was right there. It, but the breakdown. Ricky Stanzi has not been making plays. He gets, he finds a weakness, gives a very catchable ball down to his tight end, does not miss the big play down the field when he needed it. Time winding away here in the third quarter, three and a half minutes to go. Iowa driving already up, 14-10, trying to add to that lead. Stanzi in the shotgun on second and long. Blitz coming, Stanzi throws out in the flat down to the five-yard line to Cheney. He's taken out of bounds there by Robert Golden. You have to really be impressed with this secondary and the way they can cover man-to-man. -man. Watch the offensive line, the turn back. Watch what their bodies do when they turn back protection, move the pocket, Stanzi with a real safe throw. Nice protection, safe throw, get it to his receiver. What you want right now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. General keeps up there thinking, hey, I don't know. We've seen enough of this flat stuff to yeah. keep them doing. Safe, safe, safe. Third and three. They need to reach the two-yard line for a first down. Stands he out in the flat, bobbled. That'll be about a yard shy of a first down as Robinson made a whale of a catch. Well, what do you do on fourth and one? Field goal puts you up by a touchdown. And, and in the way, uh, the lack of offense that Arizona's had, you, you, you probably want to do that. You don't want to take a chance on allowing them to stop you and go down and score a touchdown and beat you. Well, the crowd is booing. You know they're going for a field goal. Daniel Murray yeah. is coming on. The crowd doesn't have to worry about getting a new contract, does it? <laughs> Murray, again, the equivalent of an extra point. From the right hash. And he drives it through to give Iowa that seven-point lead, and that's going to make him feel a little more comfortable on the Iowa sideline than the four-point lead. But, but, but still, don't you might get the feeling that here's an Arizona team that's just not even been close, but they're still within one touchdown Absolutely. of this ball game. 
Well, in case people join this late, they've had two big offensive plays. That's it. They had a quarterback draw and, a, and one run from scrimmage. The touchdown came on an interception return. They have done virtually nothing offensive. I, I think it goes back uh, to the Iowa defense and, and the speed of this defense. I think it surprised Arizona's team and, and even the coaching staff. The, era, the Iowa defenders have been all over Scott in the backfield. They've beaten the lineman up front. There's no room, no options. I thought the Iowa secondary has recognized the routes today and given options for Scott down the field throwing the ball. Well, Scott is going to have his work cut out for him. That's old Mark Stoops. You know, he's, he, I think he recognizes, look, we need some help from the offense here. We're trying to do all we can to keep us in this football game. We're going to come up with something else uh, offensively and keep my guys on the sidelines. Antolin will bring it out from three yards deep in the end zone and reaches the 19. Now to Matt Weiner in our Times Square studios in New York. Matt. All right, Matt, thanks very much. If you're going to talk to talk, you better be able to back it up. Sometimes it doesn't work out that way. Scott. Well, that was the play that was successful early in the first half yep. at playing quarterback run. Now, right on cue, though, again, if we're, they're, they're trend here on first down Arizona. 11 of 13 plays have been for three yards or less on first down. Again, th this is just an offense that can't start right in their drives. Coming into this game, Scott had completed 66% of his throws in two games for 352 yards. He'd rushed for another 131, averaging better than eight yards to carry, and Grigsby was the number two rusher in the entire country. They have shut both of them down except for one run apiece. Scott again having trouble finding anybody throws this one deep down field up for grabs and intercepted by Tyler Sash who always seems to be around the ball. Tyler Sash three interceptions a week ago that one he just played center field it was more like a punt. His fourth pick of the year in a 43 yard return. The coach said the ball just finds the guy. <laughs> he is a magnet. Yeah, it looked like a punt, but it's not what they wanted to do at Arizona, punting on second down. Scott just threw the ball up. This was a desperation. I hope something happens here. And this is where I think your football team, and Scott in particular, they fell to remember they're down only by seven. You yep. don't have to push it. Well, Iowa with a chance for a kill shot here. And around Cheney tackled out of bounds. Will there be a flag? No. Well, Taylor Sash last week was the beneficiary of some fortunate bounces against Iowa State. Tied a school record with three picks set by Grant Steen against Indiana in 2002. Sash with six interceptions in his last four games going back to 2008 now has seven interceptions in the last five games. Wager is the tailback trying to get to the outside. Nowhere to go. It's back to the line of scrimmage. Donald Horton made the tackle pursuing down the line of scrimmage. And that is going to be the final play of the third quarter. And a good third quarter it was for Iowa. Then they get the field goal to go up by seven. Now the pick. And they are in scoring territory again as we have completed. University of Iowa Hall of Fame. A popular stop for Hawkeye fans before the game. One of the most popular items now. Penix Heisman Trophy. He won it in 1939. He was killed during World War II in a Navy training flight. And of course, Kinnick Stadium named in his honor. It expanded over 70,000 seats. Full again today. And the Iowa offense could take a little of the pressure off the fans right now with another score. They're up 17-10. And we have a full quarter to go. Third down, call it four. 
pass in the flat and again very dangerously close to Trevin Wade. This guy is going to be able to play on Sundays, don't you think? He's a sophomore, and he's just all over everything. Now well, he had two interceptions last week. He has the one for a pick six today. And I think they're also just, they're squatting on him. They're sitting down they on Stanzi in the flats. I don't think they're threatened by the uh, speed of the Iowa receivers. So they're they're playing exactly what they've seen on film. And now Murray is on to try a field goal. He's hit from 20. This will be from 40. And that'll make it 20 to 10 out. Well, I got a recommendation for Sonny Dykes in that offense over there at Arizona. And I that would be line of scrimmage, no huddle, up tempo, change the pace. I like it. Get out of what you're doing. You're, you've been sitting on your haunches all afternoon doing nothing. It's time to change the tempo of your offense, change it at the line. Certainly, you have to change something. Yes, this is working. And you know they, they came into this game saying that they somewhat they've been protecting Mac, Matt Scott their quarterback uh, you know but that that's that's out the window and, and and Nick Foles their backup quarterback is more of a pocket passer something has to change it's not working yeah. what you have here this afternoon well they always say if it ain't broke don't fix it but if it is broke you better fix it especially when you're down by 10 on the road. You know, and here on this afternoon, you, you've got 57 plays by Iowa and 36 by Arizona. Yeah. And it just and it doesn't even feel that close. Antolin keeps the feet moving and gets it up to the 29-yard line. Nice return. Fans, if you're living in the Boston area or is just where your heart is, log on to ESPNBoston.com for local coverage of the Celtics, Red Sox, Bruins, and Pats, plus all of the area's college sports. ESPNBoston.com, ESPNChicago.com, and coming soon, ESPN.com for Dallas, New York, and Los Angeles. Eventually, we'll have ESPN.com rest in Louisiana and everywhere else. And here comes Nick Foles, the pocket passer, the sophomore from Austin, Texas. He's only thrown eight balls this year. And we go with a halfback pass from David Douglas on the toss. Well, they tried to cross him up, but it didn't work. <laughs> it's a little bit different there, different look, but. You know, Foles and these guys out here on this offense, they're, they're walking around. That's why I'm saying I, I don't I don't know that I would keep the pace the same as it's been. I have I do something to pick the tempo up and the mindset. I'd go two minutes, do, do something different and deliberate. Foles was on the scout team a year ago. He is a transfer from Michigan State. And they're hoping he's the guy that can bring him back. Four-man rush again. Foles stands tall in the pocket and completes this bat to the guy he tossed one to the last time, David Douglas. Gain of 14. And well, there's the change you asked for. Now you have a pocket passer. And, and then, you know, what you get you get your receivers that come across, and they're working a little bit more now than Douglas is seeing that with the quarterback in there, maybe he's going to change the tempo and the pace. You've got an Iowa defense that now is going to sit back, and they're going to try to figure out a little bit about this Foles to find out what kind of player he is. Their scouting reports have told them he's a passer, so they're going to be observing before they really sit back and start hitting them hard. Now they spread the field. Grigsby is the tailback. Grigsby will get the call. Look at that pursuit. Adrian Claiborne, the right end, chasing little Nick Grigsby all the way down the line, and he outran him. How about that? 6'3", 282 pounds, and that's just getting after it. That's playing the game fast. That's playing it hard, and that's from the back side. Grigsby, in his wildest dreams, wouldn't have ever thought that he would be caught from behind by a 282-pounder. No, and he's not going to be too fond of the idea when he sees it on film either. Nick Foles to the shotgun. What? Both arms, Broderick Benz just goes up like he's playing volleyball and slots that one down. 
and, and it's a windup too. You know, this is really easy for Benz to get up and to time the deal. Watch the windup by the quarterback Foles with the arm, the wind up and the throw. Well, you know, you gotta, you gotta feel it. There's no rhythm. Move, see it. Get into that lane where you can hit your receiver and away from the arms of a defender jumping up. This team is only two of nine on third down conversions today. They're facing a third and eight here. Bowles with time throws too high. Intended for Douglas, he was well covered. Three guys in the area, including Anger and Eads, the linebackers. And they'll have to turn it over on downs. Tyler Sash is mad there. We gave him a little love on the air. And <laughs> jinxed him. Oh, he should have had that one. Would have been a tough catch, but he's come up with everything else that's been tipped this year. Paul Cheney Jr. is deep prior to punt. A poor kick low. It's a good Iowa bounce down to the 25. Only a 29 yard kick. Decent field position for Iowa. 13 10 to go in the game. They're up by 10. You wouldn't think coming in, based on statistics, that Robinson would have 14 more rushing yards than Grigsby because Grigsby was number two in the country, but he has been held down only. Two of his 11 runs have gone for more than three yards. And there's Robinson again, takes this one up to the 35. A pair of AFC playoff teams from last year battle on ESPN Monday Night Football. Peyton Manning and the Colts look to hit their stride in the first season under head coach Jim Caldwell. They will take on Chad Pennington and the Dolphins. Colts and Dolphins, ESPN Monday Night Football. Our coverage starts with Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's. 7 o'clock. Peyton is still the best. As long as he has that head on his shoulders and the legs will keep him going. Robinson picks up a couple. And that'll be enough for a first down. Three hundred and one yards first game as opposed to one seventy six got to be happy for Chad Pennington a lot of people thought his career was over he's been able to uh, get some of his arm strength back and resurrect everything in Miami Robinson by the way just hit the century mark 17 carries a hundred yards and every first down takes off another three minutes on that clock Stanzi with a quick out We'll get this one complete. Boy, those those Arizona defensive backs, they are just loitering around the receivers. <laughs> they don't get more than a yard off of those guys. No, that no. was Devin Ross on top of Strauss. Yeah, you know what? And, and that secondary has played a pretty darn good football Haven't game. Haven't they? You know, if not making plays physically, they've mentally put doubt in Ricky Stanzi's head. And Stanzi, to his credit, though, he's had some bad throws today, but he steps up when he has to, and he makes a nice throw. And when they look at these films, it's going to scare them to death how close these guys were on everything. Robinson again. What good defense that time. He was hitting the backfield. Taken down by Javier Kelly, the linebacker, slashed in there. And Robinson going to be limping off. When you look at his numbers and 101 yards there, you know, a lot of work inside. 13 carries for 88 yards in the middle of the football field. And, and that that is why it's nice having two runners on your football team. Brandon Wager now gets a chance to come in. And, you know, and these other guys spell and they work with each other. And Robinson's only 205 on a 5'9 frame. You don't think of him so much as a guy who's running inside between the tackles. And now Stans is going to charge timeout. timeout. Iowa. To avoid a delay of game with 10.38 to go here. We've got a timeout on the field. 10.38 to play in a 10 point game. Iowa on top of Arizona. ESPN's college football. Brought to you by Toyota, moving forward, and Kingsford Charcoal, 
For a chance to win the ultimate grilling experience at the big game, go to ESPN.com slash Kingsford. The uh, pedestrian mall downtown Iowa City right near campus a favorite gathering place for students and residents alike every summer it's packed for concerts including the Iowa City Jazz Festival Scott Matthews and Patrick McManus our erstwhile producer and director were out partying last night <laughs> complete over the middle Stross on a strike from Stanzi. It's one of his better throws today for 13 yards. Yeah, you know, and I like the fact that Stanzi looked a little bit to the left to put some pressure on the corners back there to cover more field, but he didn't just telegraph where it was. Looked off, comes back over to the throw. And Trey Strauss, the dependable receiver, comes up with a play. Last week, now 12 different receivers caught balls here from Ricky Stanzi, so he will spread it around to a lot of different players. He seems to be much more confident throwing the ball to the inside than he does to the outside. The freshman tailback Wager as Adam Robinson. Based on the replay of his knee injury may not get back in this ball game. He sort of got spread out and had it look like it was hyper extended. He's had a big big day flexing it a little better now. 18 for 101 is pretty good afternoon's work. Now you know what as a runner you sometimes you got to know when your journey's down and this second effort that he has with his foot planted and he spins while he's being tackled and fortunately it looked like he went ahead and was able to get most of the spin and his foot didn't stay planted. Second and eight. And around. And beautifully defensed again. Pretty tough to do against speed of this team. And Golden, the strong safety, made the tackle. Yeah. You're not going to outrun these guys. No, not at all. And game, and game plan coming in was to really try to have a handful of misdirections to try to slow down Arizona's defense and keep them at home. Arizona's defense has played a good ball game. There's nothing wrong with what, with what they've done defensively no. today. Uh, they just have had no help from the offensive side. Iowa has converted 50% of its third down chances. They face a third and seven here. They're trying to burn some clock. They're down to 837, leading by 10. Four man rush. Stinsy with plenty of time. The out completed. First down. Inside the 30 yard line. Paul Cheney Jr., the track star. Now he did more than just was a track star on this one here and you know Cheney Jr. when he gets out there and he settles and the ball that's where he's got to sit be there for your quarterback and I thought Stanzi that time stepped up when he did was deliver better. a lot more a lot crisper delivery over the top. That's how you get it to your receiver so he has a chance to turn and run with it. Another set of downs and we've reached the eight minute mark. So Iowa accomplishing everything it wants to on this drive. Any kind of score would be gravy because they lead by 10. And they are just burning every second off of this clock they can. You know, and this defense at Iowa, as good as they are in this football game, if Ricky Stanzi can avoid this, this interception right there, this ball game is, is 20 to 3, right? Yeah. That, that pick six got him. Other than that bad throw right there, and in the second half, he's made the adjustment and uh, and not made the mistake. Well, you said at the beginning of the telecast, this was a show me game for both teams, and Iowa has certainly shown me something. Wager again dives forward. They needed to reach the 19 for a first down, and he is right there. And, and I also said the team that won this game would jump in the top, top 25. 20. And the reason that Iowa will be in the top 25 is because they will have beaten a pretty good football team that scores a lot of points usually, and their defense showed up. It's a defense that really puts them in the top 20. Got to give them some confidence going into next week when they play Penn State in a huge Big Ten showdown. Now under seven minutes to go. This is the perfect fourth quarter drive. A lot of yards, a lot of time. Wager, nice cut. 
One step away from breaking it. What a tackle by Trevin Wade. Boy, you got to be so impressed by this kid with all the skills he's shown. Well, Adam Robinson wore them down with his 101 yep. yards. Now you get a Brandon Wager coming in the ballgame, a true freshman. And see these kind of cuts here. And it, they, the coaches told us that he has great vision. Watching him, he does. You, you, you've got a tired defense, and he can do it. They didn't play him in the first game because he's a true freshman, and they're thinking, oh, geez, you just can't put a true freshman out there. But they finally talked to coaching staff. They all got together and say, look, this guy's so good, you've got to play him. Drive so far, 11 plays, 60 yards, more than seven minutes off the clock. This time, Wager swallowed up by Ken Nelson, who has played as much linebacker and down lineman as he had safety today. He's been right on the line of scrimmage. I, I don't want to take anything away from runners. Obviously, it was how I made a living for a while. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, it, it's, it's a position where you, you either have it or you don't. And if you've got the vision and the quicks and you and, and you're got a little strength and power to you you get in the game and you go it, you know the only challenge for a young running back is the pass protection schemes not understanding who you have yeah. third and six the clock just inexorably ticking away Stanzi blitz coming underneath complete Inside the 10, inside the 5, goes Trey Scross. The 6'4 senior finally tackled by Robert Golden. It is another first down. The play calling on this drive has been really basic, really solid. Yeah, and what you're going to see here, you've got it now. Mark Stoops, the defensive coordinator, he's having to change it up. Six, seven guys up front trying to come in and put pressure on the quarterback. And Iowa's offensive line and backs again picking up the blitz. And Ricky Stanzi standing there having a nice game. Wager. Touchdown. He launched himself from the three yard line and soared into the end zone. He's able to score and score because that offensive line stayed on their men. No penetration, no clear hats in the backfield to keep Wegman from jumping up and getting the, the elevation that he did. A devastating drive because it took eight minutes and 30 seconds off the clock in the fourth quarter. 74 yards on 14 plays, just what they wanted, and they got every inch out of it. Brandon Wager now, he's off the sidelines in the ballgame, having fun on his own. Iowa starting to feel a little bit better about itself. 440 to go in the ballgame. The Hawkeyes on their way to 3-0 with a 27-10 lead, and what a drive. Eight minutes and 30 seconds, 74 yards and 14 plays. The longest drive of the season, and I would venture the best drive of the season. Antolin, they could really use a big return. Antolin trying to give it to him after the 38-yard line. Check in with Matt Weiner. Matt, what do you have? Wouldn't that be a remarkable turnaround for Washington? Early last season, remember, USC went to Oregon State and got beat. Knocked him off the perch. Pressure incomplete. Well, obviously, Foles not nearly as mobile as Matt Scott. He's got the bigger arm, but he was being chased down by Claiborne and Kluge, who have had a very nice ball game for Iowa on that defensive line. Well, these, these inside guys here at, at Iowa, these defensive tackles today, Ballard, Flug, and they lost. Up. They lost both of those guys. Four-year defensive tackles, and they said it wasn't so much their athletic skill they were going to miss, but it was their leadership. Complete pass out to William Wright. Very quick, young man. Only a sophomore, 5'9", 175. Spavay is out there to make a tackle. So they're trying to get some of the guys who have speed out there to engineer some kind of a comeback. But, but this they're down by three scores, Craig. Yeah, and you know, even though Iowa lost those two guys on the inside that were really important to them, their team has good football players with experience and with pride and a good coaching staff. Yes, it does. Rolls out in the flat. 
Grigsby. It was only his second catch of the year. They don't throw their backs very much. Yeah. You know, but when you look at Kirk Ferentz and his coaching staff, when you look at the assistants, they're like 11 years. They're all together. Yeah, great stability. And, and that stability is the kind of stability you need to overcome the loss of senior leadership on the field, transition. And that's why Ferentz was saying, I need the month of September to get it all together. Well, this is a major boost of adrenaline as they get ready to move into Penn State next weekend. Fourth and two. Obviously, Arizona has to go for it. Grigsby out in the flat. Got the first down. Wisely gets out of bounds to the 48-yard line to stop the clock with 3.06. But that Iowa defense is given, going to give them all the little stuff that they want because they need three scores in three minutes and six seconds, and swing passes aren't going to do it for you. And your best player at Arizona will, will remind you again, Rob Gronkowski, their All-American tight end, did not play today. I don't know if it was his presence. I mean, they were hoping, I think, that at early in the week when we talked with Arizona, they expected Gronkowski to play. He didn't practice on Wednesday, yeah. and he was out. And, and it's obviously impacted this football team. He's got a bad back. Uh, he's had it for hurt it again at the end of the summer. If I remember correctly, he had a back injury a year ago when we saw them in the uh, Las Vegas Bowl. Pressure coming incomplete. All right, Iowa just dropping seven guys deeper and deeper and deeper. A couple of pretty good safeties here with Greenwood and Sash. Be a good game though next weekend. Iowa traveling to Penn State. It was last season when Iowa knocked Penn State off, right? On a 31-yard field goal with time running out. Yeah. So you you know you've got a good defense, and if you've got a defense like Iowa has, you have the ability to go compete in a big whiteout at Penn State. Woo! Loose ball. Picked up by Arizona. Very, very fortunate. Looks like Mike Diaz was the guy who came up with it. Last November, last November, Iowa kicker Daniel Murray, a last second 31-yard field goal that stunned Penn State right here in Iowa City. Murray had not made a field goal since the season opener. He had lost the place kicking job. He got it back with that one. And they won it 24-23. So it's gonna be a little revenge field for Penn State. Please as well. reset the game clock for 219. 216 now 219 as they'll reset the clock to go here in the fourth quarter. Iowa with the lead over Arizona. Back in Iowa City, we'll take a look at our Pacific Life game summary for Iowa and Arizona. Robinson through first blood for Iowa, and then that Iowa defense has made everything they have done stand up. Wager airborne for the touchdown. And that last drive took so much time off the clock, resulted in another touchdown of 27 to 10. That, you know what? A little note handed here. Last time Arizona didn't score an offensive touchdown was two years ago in October against Oregon State. Impressive day by Iowa's defense. Foles under pressure again, throws. And he's got a completion to Terrell Turner. The most consistent of their receivers. He's been a non-factor today. Tip of the cap to Adrian Claiborne, number 94, the defensive end for Iowa. Huge game. Ten tackles, a sack, and a forced fumble in this ball game. That is just a monster performance for a defensive end. A guy on the defensive line getting ten tackles. You, and you didn't even mention the time that he ran down. Grigsby from behind. Remember that time oh, yeah. that he, he, he went across the field and ran him down? Each week on our broadcast, Craig will deliver his opinion and insight with the Pony Express. This week, we're talking young quarterbacks who are growing up very, very fast. Who do you like? Yeah, you know what? There's some really good ones. Tate Forcia, yeah, you and I had a chance to announce that game. Uh, Michigan, his opening deal, and, and, and he's a good one. Matt Barkley, you saw the impact of him last week in Columbus beating Buckeyes. Very impressive final drive going down the field. Now, obviously, they're missing him today up at Washington. But Tate Forcier again today against Eastern Michigan. 
Michigan. Here's a young man that's, that's really turned a football program around. So the young quarterbacks having impacts in college football. Greg McElroy, he's not a freshman, he's a that's junior, right. but he's a first year player at Alabama. So it takes a very special guy either to come out of high school or be playing for the first time at a major program on this level to do what they're doing. And they have confidence. But these kids coming out of high school today, they, they get into the campuses in February, January, February. So they, they become college students earlier. They get confidence. And they've got talent and skills. The high school programs now are running these spread offenses, so they've got a lot of experience. Antolin with a chance to run, gets the ball inside the 10 to the 5, where Tyler Sash makes a tackle. Gain of 35 yards. Well, stranger things have happened. Not much, but stranger things have happened. I don't think touchdown you'll... here, onside kick, another touchdown, another onside <laughs> kick, and you got a chance. I think back to Arizona when they had the fake field goal early on, right before half, 14-10, to yes. 10, and they missed Very it, 14-13, you know, and it was just a different field of the game. I thought that was a bad decision for the fake field goal right before half. Foles in the shotgun with Antolin, number two back with him. And they'll whistle this play dead. Delay of game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Hard to have a delay of game when you're in the hurry-up situation. It is. It's counterintuitive, isn't it? <laughs> Please reset the game clock for 158. Matter of fact, that may be the only hurry-up delay of game I've ever seen. That's a great point, Craig. <laughs> Actually, quarterbacks don't seem to mind down here. Gives them a little more room to operate. Foles looks to the wide side of the field and throws. The officials look at each other. It is a touchdown. Jerron Kreiner. 6-4-2-10, they throw him the fade to the wide side of the field, and he makes the grab over William Lowe, who's only 5-10. This is an offense that has struggled in the red zone scoring touchdowns. Earlier today, they had to settle for a field goal. They couldn't put it in. I thought that this was really touchy there. Kreiner using that arm a little bit to keep the defender off of him, but he goes ahead and gets a nice fade touchdown. Foles has hit 6 out of 10 for 55 yards, and that score... And the extra point will make it 27 to 17. And now you know what's coming is the onside kick. So, and you made a point of this earlier. Now, how big is that eight minute plus drive that huge. Iowa just scored on? Just huge. You know, it's just, just chewed up the quarter. And it's tough to blame the Arizona defense because they've been on the field so much, uh, really worn down here in the fourth quarter. And Iowa just. Smartly took advantage of it. They didn't do anything silly on the drive. Very basic, very skilled runs, short passes. And tonight, another good one. ABC Saturday Night Football. Colt McCoy in the second round. Texas Longhorn looking for revenge when Texas Tech comes calling. Texas Tech, Texas on ABC's Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines tonight at 8 Eastern. Well, you see USC, they're, they're tied up and hanging in there trying to pull out a win at Washington. We, we, just, we just talked about Matt Barkley and his importance to that football team. I thought they would do better today, though, even with Aaron Corp. I didn't think they'd struggle like that because uh, they do have better players in depth than Washington. Sure. And Michigan State is watching the scores come through. It's just gone ahead of Notre Dame. And... Uh, Maybe Lou won't happen in the national championship game after this. <laughs> Here's the onside kick. Loose ball. Recovered by Iowa. What a break. That baby was alive a couple of times. Morse comes up with it to fullback. It looked like... Somebody else had touched it earlier, or was it more? A.J. Eads, 49. It's called the hands team, not the shoulder mount pads team. <laughs> you know, well, he's a linebacker. <laughs> Use your hands. It's a good job going and being decisive. <laughs> Linebackers are far more 
familiar with shoulder pads than they are catching the ball. And now Wager will put both arms around the ball and do everything they can to protect it. Mike Stoops played at Iowa out. between 81 Arizona. and 84. He played for the legendary Hayden Fry. He was a strong safety for the Hawkeyes. An All-American in his last year, both Bob and Mark played at Iowa. All three wore the number 41. Legendary family in this football program. Yeah, I sent a, uh, um, there's his mother, I guess, and, and uh, sent a text message to Bob Stoops this morning wishing him well and told him we were up here and, and I was enjoying it. And he said, hey, y'all have a great game. Wish I could be there. You know, it's a, this family loves yeah. the Iowa Hawkeyes. And tough coming home on the other side. Yeah. Well, this is just a game that's really nuts when you think about it. If Iowa, if they hold this clock and finish out with nearly 38 minutes of time of possession, it'll be the fourth most for them in school history. And we thought Arizona was a team that yeah. nearly 40 minutes of time of possession. And Arizona can't stop the clock anymore. They are out of timeouts. Wager just trying to hold on to the ball and that defense first man to hit him is trying to hold him up so somebody else can strip that football. But Wager's not having anything of it. All right, so just saying, we talked about Iowa next week. Now Arizona, here's a football team that has to reload themselves. And they've got to get ready to go play at a tough Carvallis, Oregon State, in their next game. So conference schedule begins for them. They've got a good team. They're going to learn that they're going to, they're going to have to figure out what to do without Gronkowski on their football team. If yeah. he's not there, they can't just go into a shell and not be aggressive. Waiting for that play clock to get down to one before they snap the ball. Then they do and give the ball to Wager again. Only 50 seconds to go in this game when they mark the ball ready for play. And they already have the play clock started at 40. So they'll be down to about seven seconds difference between the game clock and the play clock. And the fans start to come to their feet to give an ovation to these Hawkeyes because they have done the job this afternoon I, I think Kirk Ferentz he's he's found out today that he that, that he really does have a team yeah. that's fast and can play and compete especially on defense and his offensive line is good and this is an offensive line that didn't have their left guard, left tackle Brian Bulaga yeah a great player so even the freshman steps up Riley Reef and he did an excellent Delay of job. game on the offense five yard penalty Still fourth down. They'll take the delay. Now, you don't send in a kicking team at this point, do you? I mean, you go for it and try to run seven seconds off the clock. Yeah, I have to, you know, take a chance of ball being snapped somewhere, got to yeah. return, step up, back up a little bit, lose some ground, run out the clock more. Tough day for Grigsby in that uh, Arizona offense. Highly touted coming in. Grigsby was the second leading rusher in the country. Wager just trying to stay on his feet. And they stopped the clock with two seconds to go. This was a bone of contention with the home clock operator. I swear he stopped at a second before this play was over. It should be down to one. Last week, he stopped it at one when they thought it ran out. Last year, he stopped it at one when they thought it had run out. His integrity will never be questioned. Not, he uh, is... not a word. <laughs> His loyalty might be, but not his integrity. Usually that home clock operator just lets that thing run. And Arizona gets it back with two seconds on the clock. Chance for a Hail Mary from Nick Foles. And they have two guys about 45 yards deep for that defense. Throw underneath to Grigsby incomplete. That'll finish it. Quite a performance by the Iowa Hawkeyes. Sash gets another interception, his fourth in two weeks. Your impression. Uh, great defensive effort and an offensive line effort by Iowa. Look forward to watching them down the road.
for Craig James and our entire crew. This is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this game from Iowa City. We certainly had a great time. Once again, our final score, Iowa 27, Arizona 17. Now, back to the studio.